WTOT, I am Elise Jesse, and yes, I know your Cincinnati Bengals are 0-2. Headed into week three, the New York Jets are looking to take receipts for their head coach, Robert Sala, and of course, Cincinnati does not want to become one of those receipts for the New York Jets. We're going to talk about that, but we're also going to talk about something else. You guys have been on the Cincinnati Bengals Talk channel going crazy over these Cincy hats that you've been seeing a lot of the players wear in the locker room. Most of the players have this hat, actually. So I finally decided, I, it popped into my mind, and I decided to go investigate and find out where they are getting these hats from. I walk up to Alex Kappa. He's laying down in the locker room, and I asked him, you know, those Cincy hats, and he immediately knew what I was talking about and said yes. And I asked, where did you get them? And he looks at me with a side eye, as if, I'm not supposed to be asking that question, as if I'm asking him where Zach Taylor keeps his playbook. And he looks over at Hakeem Adeniji and he asks him, am I allowed to give her that information? And Hakeem shrugs and says, I don't know. And so Alex Kappa looks at me and he goes, you know, I can't really give you a lot of information. The only thing that I can tell you is that the plug for these hats is Teddy Karras. So I say, okay, whatever, not a big deal. Then I see Jonah Williams walking past, and I decided to also ask Jonah because Alex Kappa is kind of a guy who keeps information close to the vest anyways. He doesn't really divulge anything no matter what he's talking about. And not even Jonah could tell me the information. He says, all I can tell you is that Teddy Karras is the guy, the only guy in the locker room who you can go through to get one of these hats. Pretty exclusive. So I wait around and I finally see Teddy Karras walking through the locker room walk up to him and I ask him, Teddy, everyone keeps telling me you're the plug for these hats. Where did you get these hats from? And he looks at me with a big grin on his face and he goes, really? I said, yes, where, are, where can you get them from? And he goes, nowhere, I made it. <laughs> I know, I was not expecting him to say that at all. That's not the response that I was expecting naturally. Um, and I look at him confused and I said, what do you, what do you mean you made it? And he explains that his neighbor actually came up with the design. They are currently trademarking this design and this hat. Um, they are in a position where they are going to sell these to you, the public, the fans. Um, I believe they have white and black right now. And all of the proceeds from this hat are going to go to his charity, Village of Marisi, and that's on the east side of Indianapolis. Um, it's a charity that helps adults with developmental disabilities have more of an independent life, he was explaining to me. Um, they provide Ubers for them to get to work. Uh, they provide apartments. Um, just an overall better quality of life for people. And um, I was just asking him, you know, where? why did you decide to just make a hat? And again, with a smile, he says, I just thought that it would be a nice thing to do for my teammates. Wow. I mean, I'm in shock, but guess what? I secured one. I did. I'm really happy about it. Please. Oh my gosh. Please do not break into my house for this hat. I, it will not be easily accessible. I'm going to keep it in a safe because I know you guys are crazy over this hat and I don't want my house being broken into. Um, but I did talk to Teddy this afternoon. We didn't talk about the hat on camera just because at the time when I was interviewing him, he, I had no idea that he was the plug for this. Um, but I was asking him about an article that was written by Ben Baby, and if you want to check out that article, go to Ben's Twitter. Um, but he was quoted as saying that the offensive line does need to gain the trust of Joe Burrow. And I was just asking him about that and looking for some further explanation, and um, here's what he had to say. I think it's every day that okay. we come in here and work. I don't think that we totally, I, I, I think that quote was maybe a little misconstrued. I think he does trust us, but I think in the heat of a moment, to know that we're going to be on our guys and uh, you know protect him and be able to have enough time to deliver a good ball to someone down the field um, is something that will come with good performance, really. So I mean that starts you know today. It started yesterday. Today it's been pretty much all summer. But you know once you get into the actual games, um, you know being able to perform successfully makes everyone trust you. You want to. One of the old edges that I grew up with in this league is uh, <clears throat> trust your teammates and earn their trust in you. So that comes from consistency of performance and performing well, not only in games, but starts in practice every day. 
How do you guys um, basically work your way out of cover two, Tampa two? It seems like a lot of teams seem to be showing you guys that defense or showing Joe Burrow that defense. Mm -hmm. How do you guys work your way out of that? Do you have any opinions on that? Uh, I think running the ball. I mean, we, we I, I, I don't think we've been horrible, um, but, you know, we've got to be head on a head in a run game. If they're going to play two high safeties, we got to be able to, to lean on the horses up front and, and, and get the ball downhill. Um, but, you know, that's how teams are going to play us. So it's going to be interesting looks. We have a lot of dangerous people on the outside, so we need to stuff the ball up the middle uh, as much as we can. When you watch film on the Jets' defense, obviously you're dealing with the front seven, but um, they allowed 184 rushing yards, three touchdowns to Nick Chubb. Um, what do you see when you see plays like that happening for the, for the Jets? You know, I think that the Jets, I've played against the Jets my whole career, been in that division yeah. my whole career. Yeah. Um, their defensive line has always been – their premier uh, position of okay. their team, um, in my experience. And, you know, we're just going to have to execute blocks. And really, run game to me comes down to hat on a hat, everyone doing their assignment, uh, getting the ball downhill, and then finishing blocks. So a lot of these g gains we've had can be maybe their four yard, four or five yard gains. We finish one block here, uh, you know, it could be a 12, 15 yard, 20 yard gain. And that can change the dynamic of obviously a drive, but even a whole quarter of game. Yeah, the Jets defense giving up a total of 184 rushing yards in addition to three rushing touchdowns to Nick Chubb on Sunday. And they still won, which is insane because of Joe Flacco, of course, and we'll get to that. But I also wanted to talk to Jamar Chase. He's kind of becoming a regular on the OT now. Um, DJ Reed, he's the more veteran cornerback in the Jets locker room. They also have... Um, Former Bearcat Sauce Gardner, which, by the way, Sauce has not earned his nickname within the Jets locker room just yet. And the Cincinnati Bengals do not want to be the team that allows Ahmad Gardner to earn the nickname Sauce amongst his teammates. Um, but I did talk to, to Jamar about DJ Reed and what makes him difficult to go against. Here he is. Yeah, he's a good physical corner. Uh, he knows how to attack the receivers with his hands. He's a, he's real physical, um, and he's scrappy. So that's kind of a good DB. You know, somebody that I, I would like to go against. There, see, this I would never personally slander Joe Burrow, but there are people nationally, and we don't have to repeat their comments, mm -hmm. but they seem like they're going in on your quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, what, like, what is your reaction when you get a sense of that? I'm blocking out the noise, especially with stuff like that, especially stuff going on with Joe. Um, it just make sure his head is clear, make sure we're keeping him up, lifted up, and, you know, just, just going through the process of, of, of getting better as a whole team, as a whole unit. And I remember after the game, you said that you would prefer more deep shots. Mm -hmm. If you guys are ahead in a game instead of trailing, does mm -hmm. that open up the opportunity for you guys to take deeper shots? Uh, it could be. It could be. You know, we haven't had that that <laughs> that happen that yet. Yeah, yeah, we haven't had it happen yet. But I mean, it, it could be the case. You know what I'm saying? And, and they might change up and might go man on third down. So. Uh, it depends on how they plan this, and see, we'll see when it's game time. We've been getting a lot of new, different looks when the game came, so you know we just gotta adjust on the fly now. And um, a few players have commented on it, but it's a hypothetical situation. Mm -hmm. Say you guys have a coin toss, and you guys win the toss. Would you prefer to take the ball every once in a while instead of deferring? I don't know. I don't never. I, n I don't have a say so on that. I just know it's, I just hear the heads and tails in my ear before the game, and that's about it. I don't really know if they're deferring it or not. I think we like the ball coming out of that second half. It seems like, I mean, I've covered a lot of losing locker rooms here in Cincinnati. Uh -huh. um, and an 0 and 2 is an easy way to be deflated, and it doesn't seem like any of you guys have come across that. Mm. In your opinion, why is that? Uh, because we know we're still a good team. You know what I'm saying? We just went, we're just going through adversity. We started off last year, we didn't start off so good. Uh, we lost two games last year. We got to know how to re respond off it and you know what I'm saying it's just it's just a habit and I want to see how people are going to respond as so as the coaches too so um, I think it's going to be good experience for us all to learn from Yes, the offensive line does have to play better. The quarterback needs to read the field better. Joe Burrow does. His receivers need to play well. They need to establish a significant run game against the Jets. But it's not just the offense. The defense also has to show up in a big way. And right now, the Bengals' defense is ranked 31st in the turnover margin. That's just not good enough. And I talked to Jermaine Pratt earlier this afternoon on how they can, you know, get those big splash plays that benefited them so well last year. 
Yeah, um, obviously we got to start fast, create a, a big play, get the ball back to our offense. That's our emphasis. We need to start with an interception, a strip sack or something, a force form or something to get the game starting in our favor. Do you think a lot of those splash plays helped you guys win big games last year? Yeah, absolutely. This is the turnovers, getting more turnovers. I, we only had one. We only had one turnover so far, yep. and we need to get more of them to have a more opportunity for our offense to score points. And I know you guys are zero two, but it doesn't seem like your confidence has dropped off whatsoever. Can, no, no. Can you put your finger on why? No. I mean, I know you know why. But can you tell me why? Uh, I mean, I, it's the NFL. You know, we. Been, we only lost about six points with two games, you know, right. so we just got to just get over this hump, whatever it is, you know, getting better each each day as an individual and then attacking. And then, like I said, on defense, we need to get more turnovers to get help our offense and get, get more points, have more balls and Joe in. What do you think, I mean, how, what do you think Joe Flacco does really well? He's been in the league for 15 years. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> he's, he's very good at what he does mentally. Yeah, he's uh, smart. You know, when you're going against an old vet, you know, you, you can't fool him so much with coverage enough you know, because right. he's seen it so many times. You know, Super Bowl quarterback obviously knows in and out of defense and know what he want to throw, like, target before we probably we probably rotate or something. He probably already know where he want to go at. So you just got to be sound on defense and then try to fool him sometimes, you know, with some, some things on third down and stuff like that. But he's a great quarterback, you know. He's a Hall of Famer. What would it mean to you and your teammates to get that first win and just get that monkey off your back a little bit? I mean, I mean everything, you know, just going in the right direction, you know getting the first first win of the season then carrying that momentum on to 30 night because we all have a quick turnaround. So it's making it huge. As you can tell watching some of the interviews that you've already seen, the confidence level within this team has not dropped whatsoever. I also spoke to defensive end Sam Hubbard, Cincinnati homegrown. Um, he got his first sack actually against Joe Flacco when he played for the Baltimore Ravens. And, um, you know, Sam's awesome. He reflected on that night. It was really special for him. He had a massive game. And this is our conversation. Uh, yeah, that was a big <laughs> game for me. I saw the clip they posted on Instagram recently. Pretty cool. What about him makes him so good outside of the fact that he's obviously a veteran and can read defenses pretty well? Yeah, I mean, he's just uh, I mean, the Super Bowl winning cornerback. He's yeah. been in the league 15 years. He knows where he wants to go with the ball and protects the ball. Um, he can get the job done. There's no question about that. And uh, I even saw first two weeks him scramble if he needs to get the first down. So, uh, you know, a lot of respect for him as a player in his career. And two touchdowns in the final, what, 90 seconds yeah. I think, last week against the Browns. I don't think that the Jets have recovered an onside kick in six years, so some things broke their way. Um, but what did you think of his play in the final 90 seconds? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, they got a lot of playmakers. Uh, Garrett Wilson, uh, their backfield on first things first. So uh, they, they got potential for a big play offense, but, you know, to – you know, never be down and out. It's the NFL teams like that. But it comes from their head coach, and you can tell the culture they created. Um, you know, they got some some good going on over there, and uh, it's going to be a good game. And for the defense as a whole, is there, you know, a certain sense of urgency in practice this week? Maybe get some more takeaways than you've gotten so far. I believe it's one through two games. Yeah, no, we're always putting an emphasis on that. Um, you know, stripping at the ball. Uh, Multiple attempts at the ball as the running back runs through our practice field. Uh, you just got to talk about it. You got to do it. You got to do it in practice before it shows up in the game. And that's been uh, one of the biggest emphasis we make every week. It's not just new this week. Uh, but, you know, they come in bunches and, you know, we've had droughts before and you just got to keep chopping away. Does, is it a thing where once you get a few in a row, it just starts to pop off a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it's just guys? that's how it usually goes. But uh, you just got to put in the work and it'll come. No, uh, you got to have faith in that. So yeah, Joe Flacco throwing two touchdowns within the final 90 seconds of their game to win against the Browns, 31 to 30. Just insane. I don't know if you saw that 66 yard touchdown he threw to Corey Davis, but it was crazy. I've never seen him get the ball out that fast. Maybe he has, I just haven't seen it. Um, but I wanted to talk to one of my dear friends within the media. Um, she's covered the New York Jets for 
I believe 13 years. She works for SNY and she's covered a lot of losing locker rooms, but this time she was finally able to cover a locker room that won in September. Um, she also touched on Sauce Gardner, former Bearcat, and how Carl Lawson is fitting into this defense. Um, and also CJ Uzama. He's a game time decision with that hamstring, but she mentioned that he certainly does want to play. Okay, now I'm going to introduce you guys to a person who I absolutely adore in this business. She was one of the good ones. Um, She's covered the Jets for over 10 years, um, a well-respected journalist, and just somebody who has been in and out of so many losing locker rooms, as have I, (laughs) with the Cincinnati Bengals until a couple years ago. Um, Janae, covering the one-in-one Jets, I mean, the comeback that they had against the Browns last week, just incredible. You were there. Well, first of all, Elise, thank you for that great introduction. You are actually one of my favorite people. I'm so glad we connected through pregnancy and being a sports reporter in men's college uh, basketball. Um, That's always fun. And the fact that the Jets are one in one, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, the last time the Jets won a game in the month of September, 2018, um, Olivia and Cora were two months old. They're how old now? Yeah, four. Yes. Yeah. So the fact that I'm cover, I covered a winning, a win in September was awesome. I mean, being there in Cleveland and the fact that they were down 13 points with a minute 22 left, like, oh, here we go again. Same old yep. Jets. No way are they going to win this one. And then Corey Davis scores on that 64 yard TD. And you're like, wait a second. No way. And then they recover <laughs> the onside kick. I'm like, are we watching the Jets right now? Like this Jets team? <laughs> And then the little rookie Garrett Wilson goes down and scores. And we're like, oh my gosh, the Jets just won this game, a game that they're not supposed to win. You know, if they're in it to the fourth quarter, we're like, okay, you know, they're getting it. And then they come out with this win. You're like, wait a second. Wow. I mean, it was the most, one of the most exciting games I have covered in a long, 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 long time. And it was just so much fun, so much energy. And to see these young guys do what they're supposed to do was crazy. And now they're one and one. And we're getting ready for Cincy, who is 0-2, which is crazy to me. <laughs> I did not think that the Bengals would be in a situation where they were 0-2 and, and going into the 1-1 Jets. Um, I, I found a lot of humor in uh, Robert Sala's comment when he was saying that he was taking receipts <laughs> of people who were doubting them. What did you think of that comment? I love that stuff because it's so yeah. off the normal script of a head coach. Like head coaches just don't say things like that. So I just loved hearing that. What do you think? And I was the same way. And I fans were so upset about it. And again, I get it. Jets fans have been on the losing end for a yeah. very, very long time. This is my 13th season. Elise, in my first year, they went to the AFC Championship. It was their second year with Rex Ryan. I've covered one other winning season. So I, I get it. Like, the Jets fans want to win. and But they were so upset when Robert Saul was like, we're going to take receipts. And, and you know what? I loved it. I absolutely oh, loved it. As a head coach, and especially being in New York, and he had the locker room. The guys in the locker room loved it because here their head coach was going out on a limb, standing up for them, saying, listen, I believe in this locker room. I get it. This locker room is better than what it's what you think it is and what it's looked like week one. So I absolutely love that. And you know what? If you talk to any of these guys in that locker room, they played that last game week two because of Robert Sala because they need to back up their head coach. So obviously it worked. <laughs> Yeah, it certainly did. And you mentioned the the young, the youth on this team, yeah. so much young talent mm-hmm. on this squad. And it, it seems like they just don't play into the narrative of, you know, their Jets are going to jet or the Jets are horrible. They just don't play into that. And mm-hmm. they don't think about anything like that. It seems like they are pretty confident when they take the field. Yeah. And, and this, it's a very young rock, uh, roster. I think it's one of the youngest in the NFL, maybe the second or even the youngest in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And ignorance is bliss. I mean, I asked Robert Sala last week, I was like, you know, do you, is it easier? Or is it harder to rebound from a hard loss? Because with your team so young and he goes, it's actually easier because they don't know, they don't know the difference. Like they yeah. think, oh, well, well, we lost. We got to win now. You know, these guys are coming from college pro college programs that win all the time. So again, ignorance is bliss. And I can tell you this, this is one of the best rosters talent wise that I have seen from the Jets in a long time. They're young, though. They've got to learn how to win. They have to learn how to be an NFL team. And once all these pieces start to click and after last week's win where they figured out, wow, it's a minute 22, minute 33 left. 
and we're down 13 and we just won this game, that confidence is going to skyrocket them. I mean, Garrett Wilson, this receiver mm -hmm. is unbelievable. I mean, some Crazy. of his routes he runs and some of the balls he catches. And then you got like Brees Hall. Once his, I mean, he fumbled this first week one. He's not going to do it again as a running back. I mean, there's just so much young talent on this team. And Michael Carter, um, the running back. For his yeah. Second year, yeah, he looks he's really good. Confident. He's the heartbeat of this offense. And again, then you get Joe Flacco back there, the old guy who I love. 15 year that. vet. He I can't believe it. Right. Um, <laughs> but he was so cool. Joe is, I think, exactly what they needed. And again, Zach will come in when he's ready to go. But right now, I think they're learning how to win. And when you got a guy like Joe Flacco back there, it helps. And talking a little bit about the veterans, Carl Lawson, how, how do you think he's fitting into this offense? And also, have you had a conversation about anime with him yet? I have not, but you know what? I'm going to, I'm talking to him this week. So I, Are you? I, by the way, huge fan of yours, by the way, I had to throw your name in there when he first came and like, Hey, I know he's like, Oh, she's awesome. So Aww. that kind of got me in good with him. Um, I mean, this is the first year Carl's actually played for the Jets because yes. as you know, last year he didn't. And, He's coming on, like, I think he had to get, I think week one, you didn't hear his name a lot, but I think it was also because he hadn't played in over a year. So right. he's coming, he was coming off that ankle injury or Achilles injury. He's just, he's awesome. I mean, and he's that veteran leadership you need on the D line and on that defense. And you talk to him, like the guys just, you talk about him to other guys, the guys just like, even when he wasn't on the team last year, he was so much a part of the team. Like, John Franklin Myers, all these guys would be like, oh, yeah, we talk to Carl all the time. I watch film with Carl. Carl showed me how to do this. Carl showed me how to do that. So you need a guy like Carl Lawson. And, again, he's just awesome. And he's, like, so good. Like, I cannot wait until he's, like, confidence-wise and ability-wise and everything is back to Carl Lawson. Because I do think it takes a little time to get, you know, get into game shape and to play after a huge injury. I am a little worried about the Bengals offensive line, mm -hmm. trying to keep Joe Burrow upright, going up against a guy like Carl Lawson, to be completely honest with you. I'm yeah. And worried. he's going back to Cincy. So he is, you know, you know, guys like to yeah. prove back to their old team. Look at me. Yes, exactly. That's so true. And I don't know if CJ Uzama will play because of the hamstring issue he's been he's having. Good. I think Sala said that uh, what he's a game time decision yeah. this week. Yeah, I, it's it's not. I mean, we were surprised he went on the injury list um, mm -hmm. last week. And then when he wasn't on, I think it's a little worse than they expected last week. But as you know, CJ wants to play. And this is a game that CJ is going to look forward to. And as a veteran, I think I wouldn't be shocked if CJ played. But I also mm -hmm. wouldn't not be I wouldn't be shocked if he didn't play and let him rest and save him up for the end of the season. Okay. Well, even if he doesn't play, has he, he was a guy in Cincinnati who injected so much personality into the locker room. Has he been a guy in New York like that? Oh, oh yeah. First of all, I mean, he's a media darling. Everybody <laughs> loves CJ, all the media guys, just as common yeah. to say and like the random stuff, but he would just like, I think he was describing Zach Wilson's arm. It's like, he's just stupid at athletic like just like crazy like fun stuff you love too he had a slushy one time and um brought it to the things like guys have you had this slushy it's so good we're like we're not allowed to have such like i'm gonna bring you guys all slushies like he just is awesome he's just fun and then you put him with tyler conklin he uh is a jets tight end mm -hmm. that came from minnesota he yeah. was one of another they were um picked up in the offseason like back to back and just the tandem of those two are awesome. Like Tyler's not as outgoing necessarily as CJ, but he has like that witty sense of humor. So the two of them together are awesome. Like it's a really fun locker room. And with guys like CJ bringing in that personality, even Carl Lawson, as you know, has a great personality, like that yeah. veteran personality. And then the rookie personalities, like it's fun. It really is. What do you think about yes, Sauce Gardner? Jets locker room. What do you say? <laughs> Wait, I didn't I said, yes, I'm actually talking about a Jets locker room. <laughs> I know it's crazy. I mean, I'm really happy for you because you've covered so many Jets locker rooms that have, you know, you've kind of had to pull stuff out of players just because of losing seasons. It's pretty much how it is around the league. That's how it is with the Cincinnati Bengals. Anyways, when a, when a team loses, they really don't want to talk about much. Um, I wanted to know what your thoughts were on rookie sauce Gardner, because he's highly regarded in Cincinnati, a former Bearcat. Um, so and huh, so many connections. I didn't, I forgot, I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know. So he'll be charged with covering either Chase or T, I believe. So, um, how do you think he fares as a rookie so far in two weeks? 
I think last week, um, first week he did unbelievable. Like he, he, that number, that number three pick, like he proved, like he proved that I deserve to be picked that high. Second week, last week, you know, he didn't have a bad game, but he did have a spectacular and they threw it at him more um, last week. But I'm telling you, this kid does not act or look like a rookie. He's long, he's wide, like, and his confidence, like he'll go at it, like in practices during training camp, he'd go after like, like one of the scariest guys on the def- on the defense, like, or on the offense, you know what I'm saying? Like he would like jab at him and you're like, dude, like, Whoa. like <laughs> he talks a lot of crap, but the players have so much respect for him because he backs it up. Now, his teammates don't call him Sauce yet because he has to earn that nickname, they said. So they call him Ahmad or, you know, okay. AG. So they don't get, he doesn't get the nickname Sauce in the locker room, but I think he will earn it by midway through the season. Like Joe Douglas did a tremendous job of drafting young, talented, hungry guys. Like Sauce is so hungry. He's one of the last guys on the, off the field. He's always asking questions, like is obsessed with learning, is obsessed with being good and hates it when he doesn't do well, hates it. Like when he makes one little mistake or a guy gets by him or a guy throws on him. So it's, it's really cool to watch sauce and he's fun. He's such a good kid. Yeah. He, he seems really awesome. I've never personally been able to interview him, but he seems fantastic. Real good kid. Well, and I was looking at some of the stats from week two and the jets. I mean, that comeback was awesome. Offensively. I mean, Joe Flacco looked sharp. Um, Corey Davis, fantastic. Um, but defensively they allow 184 rushing yards and three touchdowns. How do they go about cleaning that up when they know that they're going into a game where you have, uh, Joe Mixon and obviously Joe Burrow who, who can scramble. Yeah. I mean, but then if you look at week one, the Mm -hmm. first half of the season, first half of the game, like this defense knows they can do it. They know they can stop the run. They know they can slow down and offense. It's just, this is a typical jet. And I hate saying typical jet, single jet. Like when the offense does well, then the defense struggles and they usually can't win those games. Like they usually, or like when the offense uh, struggles and the defense is like on fire, then they always, they fall apart. But I, I think the jets, I mean, you had Nick Chubb and you had Kareem Hunt, two unbelievable running backs last last week. And just containing the edges, containing these guys. They did a great job on Lamar Jackson for three quarters Mm -hmm. of the game. So I think they have that under their belt. They have the confidence knowing that, okay, our offense can win a game if we have to. Like, if we bend, don't break type of defense, we can do it. And I think they have a chip on their shoulder right now. I mean, yeah. this is a defense coming in that, again, you got a Carl Lawson, you got a CJ Mosley, you got these young guys too in Sauce Gardner who are cocky. And they're, I mean, but not cocky to the point where they're arrogant. I think they're confident and they know, you know, we got this. We're not afraid of anybody anymore. We're not the same old Jets and our coach is taking receipts for everybody who doubts us. So I think that does help a lot. How do you think they will fare against a Cincinnati Bengals team who is, you know, still trying? They obviously have issues because they're 0 2. So they still have issues protecting Joe Burrow. And Joe Burrow is a quarterback who last week was getting the ball out the second fastest in the NFL in 2.39 seconds. Um, does their defensive line focus in on that? Like, do they do they hone in on what is what is making Joe Burrow uncomfortable in the pocket? Like how, how do they go about that? Do you know? They definitely do. And I think in the off season, they're, they're, they beefed up their D line. I mean, because the yeah. Jets have always been looking for a pass rusher for as long as I've covered this team and they went out and got pass rushers. You got a healthy Carl Lawson. Like I said, this, as you know, they drafted a guy, um, Jermaine Johnson, uh, you know, their third first round pick. Um, this is a D line. Quinnen Williams, who's been unbelievable. I mean, he is, he did leave the game with an ankle injury, so I don't know where he's at status wise. Um, and then don't forget, they actually have cornerbacks this year. You got a Sauce Gardner. You got you know back in the secondary. You got a Jordan Whitehead. You have a DJ Reed. You have guys in the secondary that the D line is confident. Like okay, we let's get to the quarterback. But like you said, Joe Burrow is a special kind of quarterback. He gets that ball out fast, and they know that. So I think it'll be quite interesting to see how Robert Sala and Ulbrich, you know, game plan against a guy like Joe Burrow. 
But this is also an O-line that can protect Joe Burrow. And the Jets D-line is going to feast. And that's the crazy thing is that I, I actually have sympathy for the Bengals offensive line because they spent so much money in the offseason getting retooling this offensive line to protect Joe Burrow. And all of a sudden you look up and you're going into week three and your franchise quarterback has been sacked 13 times and on pace for it depends on whose math you trust. I've heard 124. He's on pace for 124 sacks. I've heard I, heard like 100, I think I read him or 111. He's on Yes, I've heard that too. 50 times last year. Yeah, he was 51 in the regular season and then 70 or 71 um, overall throughout the playoffs. It's just like, I don't know how much longer his career will last if he continues to be sacked the way that he is. Yeah, I mean, I just... I mean, I came from the Jets in from Indianapolis where yes. they were from Peyton Manning. I mean, I missed the Andrew Luck, but I was still, you know, but you look at a guy like Andrew Luck. I mean, if you don't have an mm-hmm. offensive line to protect a franchise quarterback, it just doesn't work. Trust no. me, I know all about protecting quarterbacks <laughs> and battle lines and, you know, and the Jets O line, they're trying to work on continuity because the first time all five of them have played was week one. So this yeah. is an old line that is just now getting used to each other. You had Mackay Becton her, and then, you know, they had to move Dwayne Brown got hurt. So they moved George Fant back to left. And then you moved Max Mitchell rookie in and AVT moved over. So there's a lot of, and a lot of moving pieces and a lot of retooling on this O line. So I get it. But when you got Joe Burrow behind you, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a different situation. I would definitely think for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so do you, I know they have to evaluate. I'm, I'm thinking that Cincinnati Bengals fans would love to see CJ Uzama play against the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes. I just don't know if he, you mentioned that he would be a game time decision or they had, they would have to evaluate him through practice. Right. One yeah. I think it practice. depends on how well he practices this week. Um, okay. Again, I think CJ Uzama would love to be out there against Cincinnati. So I think if he has any say and can do whatever he can, um, again, I was a little surprised that he didn't play. I didn't realize, but they said the injury was a little worse than they, you know, and yeah. you don't want to mess with a hamstring because that can, you know, go, go all season. So when they have this young guy, Jeremy Ruckett, he, um, Rucker, sorry, I said it wrong. There you go. Um, he's the he's the tight end they drafted. He's from Long Island, a hometown kid, and he's kind of the guy that like CJ and Tyler um, have been mentoring. But the tight end position these last two weeks have been used to help the O line. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. t- they really haven't. You haven't seen a lot of. You've the just Bengals seen them that. helping out, shipping, taking care of Miles Garrett. You know, David Cl- uh, Clowney. You know, all those guys. Well, and so the Bengals come into the stadium where like the Jets seem like they have new energy injected into their team. Fans, I'm assuming, are very excited to welcome the 0-2 Bengals. What do you what kind of environment do you think the Cincinnati Bengals will be met with when they go on the road to face the Jets in week three? Oh, I honestly, I mean, after this win, Jets fans, I mean, again, week one, Jets fans are like, oh my gosh, same old Jets, we're done. And typical <laughs> Jets fans. Um, and then, after, I mean, but Jets fans are good fans. I mean, they're loyal fans. They love their team. And when they're winning, oh, there's nothing like Jets fans. I mean, even they're losing, there's nothing like Jets fans. You just, <laughs> I just love Jets fans because, they're, you know, they got that attitude. But it's going to be crazy. It's supposed to be a beautiful weekend since he's coming. And don't forget, since he was the team they beat last year, mm-hmm. with the Mike White experiment. Yep. And I mean, so they're, they're coming off that big win. They're coming off there since he's coming in. Oh, and two, the jets can be, they know they can be two and one, which mm-hmm. is crazy to think about it. So I think since the, I think the fans are going to be loud. They're going to be crazy because it's been a minute since the jets, home fans got to see a win. So they're going to want to see it. Especially yes. with nice outside. <laughs> I know early exactly. in, and early in the season, they don't get to home. Jets fans don't get to see early wins. That, that is very true. You touched on that. And um, yeah, the Bengals that lost last year in week eight to the Jets spurred a two game road, like losing streak for the Cincinnati Bengals, which they had two of last year, which they referenced in their press conferences on Monday. Like we've been through two game losing streaks before. Um, but the jets have been a dangerous team for the Cincinnati Bengals, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's just it. 
the Jets are that sneaky, dangerous team because when you when most teams see the Jets on the schedule, they circle, oh, we can win this game. Well, these kids, and I'm calling them kids because they're young. They're 22, 20. Exactly. I could afford them. I could literally be legally be their mother and it'd be fine. I mean, they're hungry. They don't care what you think. They don't they love the fact that you everybody thinks they're gonna lose because they got nothing to prove. They don't have a bullseye on their back. I mean, no one yeah. thinks they're gonna beat the Jets. Look at the Browns. I mean. All Nick Chubb had to do was knee, was kneel, and the game's over. But it's the Jets, so the Jets aren't going to come back, right? So the Jets came back and won. So they're a confident bunch of guys, and they're talented. Like I said, this is one of the most talented Jets rosters I've seen in a long, long time. And there's only room to go up, and they know that. Janae, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming on with us. And I'm so jealous because I was only in Connecticut for nine months, as you know, but the fall – in Connecticut. I know your husband is all about like making everyone be obsessed with Connecticut. That's one thing I am obsessed with is just the yes. fall foliage throughout, throughout the East. East and Coast. the apple picking. Remember when apple picking? Yes. I miss you. <laughs> I know. Why you back for, we should, why aren't you out here this weekend? We could go apple picking on Saturday. <laughs> just like the old times. It'd be great. Yeah. When people ask me, they're like, do you miss anything about Connecticut? I say, Janae Coakley, Andrea Hurley and fall foliage. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's my list. There we are. Really, I mean, there's nothing like fall in the Northeast. Nothing, nothing. like it. I mean, yeah. you need it because you go into winter and then when winter time, you're like, wait, why am I here? Well, yeah, you look outside and there's 13 inches of snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you don't really see that here in, in the Midwest and Cincinnati as much as no. you do in Connecticut. It's crazy. But um, you're awesome. Thank you so much you're for your awesome. time. I'm so excited. I can't wait to one of these days we can talk about um, oh girl, our girls uh, on the Olympic team, volleyball team. So what, 15 years from now? That would be, that would honestly be really fun. Yeah. I, I think Cora will end up being probably two or three inches taller than Olivia, but they'll both be twin, they'll be twin towers. It's fine. All I know is that they got the two exactly, the two twin towers <laughs> right there. Chicken butt. <laughs> four days apart too it's gonna be fun I know so much fun and they got the attitudes to go with it so <laughs> you're so much fun Bengals fans if you see Janae Coakley at the game on um, Sunday say hi to her she's awesome Please. you're the best so again I promise to keep you updated on when you can find this hat from Teddy Karras that he made awesome um, he's going to keep me up in the loop on all of that stuff when it's going to launch and things like that so that you guys can get your hands on some of this merchandise and again do not break into my house for this you will not be able to find it I'm going to put it in a safe or something Andrew Fox Miller I'm speaking directly to you as well um, and that's it for this week. I'll see you next week. Um, it, there might be a time change. The game for the Cincinnati Bengals and the Miami Dolphins does kick off um, right around our showtime, so we might change it. I'll get back to you, though. You can check our social media for that. See you next week.